So welcome people of God. So I want to share with you a prophetic release and I pray that this word will locate you, that this word will land and live on the inside of you. And yesterday I was having a conversation with someone and he talked about how the story of Hannah always blesses his life, especially the part where um, right after Hannah has the moment with the priest that she then conceives the son that she's been asking God for. And so when I had this conversation, the Lord had me to go read the story of Hannah for myself. It's not a story that I preach a lot. I think I've touched on it, but it's just not one of those passages of scriptures that I go to a lot, that I reference a lot. And so when I went to my Bible app to look up the story of Hannah, the first thing that caught me was the fact that Hannah is introduced, as she should be, in the first book of the first chapter of Samuel. So those multiple ones, those double ones, were in the 11th month, they caught me. Like, like that located me immediately. And then as I read through just that first chapter of the first book, there was a lot of activity. There is a lot of activity, and that's the word that God has given me to release to, th to this house for this month. There was a lot of activity there. And so in there being a lot of activity, as I read through this, this first chapter in the first book of Samuel, and I just, I'm going to give you a real recap. I want to release something into your life, but I want to just give you a recap of this story, of this moment. So in this first chapter, we are introduced to Hannah and Hannah is a woman that is married to a man that has another wife named Penina. And the Bible says that Hannah cannot have children and Penina does have children. There is one translation that says she has sons and daughters. And so Hannah is really disturbed and hurt and stressed and pain and all of those things about the fact that she cannot have children. And the Bible indeed says that the Lord has closed her womb. And so when they have the moment where they go and they, they have the encounter with the Lord and they go to the temple, you know, year after year, Penina is literally, the, there are translations that says she's tormenting, she's torturing, she severely provokes. That's what the King James says. She is literally not letting up with the fact on Hannah. She's not letting up on Hannah. Penina is not giving Hannah a break about this thing. And Hannah is hurt. In this in this one encounter, she she she's not eating, she's crying, and Penina will not let up. And I don't know what Penina looks like in your life. I don't know if Penina is a person like like she was to Hannah. I don't know if Penina is a problem. I don't know if Penina is a principality. I don't know. Maybe, or maybe you have Peninas. Maybe you're like, sis, listen, I'm dealing with all the above. Person, principality, problem. We got Peninas over here. Peninas. And... Hannah has a moment where she just, she is beyond being consoled and she goes to the temple and she is crying her heart out to God. The Bible says that she is weeping bitterly and she encounters the priest Eli. And we, it, it's in this moment that we've actually been preached to a lot because Eli thinks that Hannah is drunk. Like he thinks, Hannah, I don't even know what Hannah, how she's acting that makes Eli think that but he thinks that Hannah is drunk and he kind of rebukes her for being in the house of the Lord and being drunk. And Hannah tells Eli, and this is when we locate her, her heart. This is when we locate her heart, right? We, we already caught a glimpse of it because she doesn't say, the Bible doesn't record her saying anything back to Penina, right? She doesn't say anything, but even when her husband tries to console her and gives her double, she still, she just still is no, like, no, I'm, I'm not okay. I'm not okay. Like, I'm not okay. And Hannah tells the priest that she is disturbed, that she is just crying out and calling out to God. And what I love, what I love is in verse 17, y'all know, the man of God gives his agreement to Hannah about what is on her heart about her desire, about her petition. He says, may the God of Israel grant your petition. 
Eli does not know what Hannah's praying about. He doesn't know if this, may, maybe what she's going through is the will of God because it is God that closed her, her womb. So I can't be praying against. Maybe that's perfect. Maybe that's permissive. I don't know. This word may or may not be. Y'all know how I go. <laughs> Y'all know Eli yields his agreement to the woman of God that is in distress. He doesn't put restrictions or conditions on his anointing. And the Bible says that when Hannah leaves, she is better. She's better. She's not sad. She eats. There we locate her posture. In that quick moment. She's been tortured for years. But here is the man of God telling Hannah to go in peace. Hannah leaves. She's not sad. She's not downcast. And that night, when she's intimate with her husband, the Lord remembers her. The Lord hears her. That is why she actually names her son Samuel. But listen, y'all know how I do it. Y'all know what we anointed to for up in here. I'm looking for the extra. I'm looking for the extra and God does not disappoint when he tells the story of Hannah because listen, listen, Hannah made a vow. You give me a son, I'm going to give him back to you. And therein, hallelujah, mm -mm -mm. thank you, Jesus, therein is birth the extra and his name is Samuel. He will be the prophet that will tell the story of Saul, that will tell the story of David, and that will show us all that children of Israel, Exodus, all that. He will show us how David subdues the land of Canaan. Therein is the extra. There, It is unacceptable for us to be going through anything with one, two, three, four, how many ever paninas and God not deliver extra. God is a God of extra. God does not give you without it being extra. And he was the one that closed her womb. Some of us going through stuff and we can't put it on God, but he's still a God that gives and delivers extra. He knows no other language other than extra. So then listen, <laughs> And, and, and I love the fact that even when, when it's time to go to the temple, however they do it the next year, Hannah doesn't even want to go. Like she just, she just wants to take care of her baby and, and love on her baby. Listen, had it been, had Samuel been my son, right? Maybe not in that moment, but years later, <laughs> Penina, what, what your kid's name at in the Bible, sis? do your children listen they don't even name penina kids in the bible right like where your books at huh what which where old testament new testament where that that would have been romania <laughs> god god listen but see again we saw hannah's heart we saw how how loving hannah was right because first of all penina wouldn't have been on my throat like that anyway like <laughs> but glory to god <laughs> Do you, do you see, though? Do you see the extra? Do you see the extra that God gave Hannah? Do, Hannah prayed for a son, and God released her. Listen, and Samuel was loved. He was loved, right? Even when I would read the first and second, and the first and second book of Samuel, which is weird that I don't preach from them, because it, it really honestly... In one of the hardest seasons of my life years ago, it was it was there that I really honestly was ministered to about David, but it was through the first and second book of Samuel, right? Those books are named after Samuel, not Saul, not David, not none of that stuff. Samuel, right? That is who God is. Hannah asked for a son and God gave her a Samuel. God gave her extra God gave her extra. That is the heart of God. That is the language of God. That is that aggressive goodness. That is exceedingly and abundantly. That is that good, perfect, and pleasing will of God. That is what that looks like. It is, uh, listen, that, that barely making it, that from breakthrough to breakthrough, all that pleading and, and panic that y'all in, all that, listen, when Penina is on Hannah's neck, Hannah does not go back and forth with the problem. She does not go back and forth. She says, no, I'm about to take this up with God. I'm about to, I'm about to go to where I can get some performance. I'm not talking to the enemy. That's the problem in the church. That's why people stuck. You always rebuking the enemy. No, I'm about to go talk to the performer. 
I'm about to go talk to the performer. I'm about to plead with heaven. I'm about to cry out to heaven. I'm about to look so crazy in this temple that people think I'm drunk. I'm about to get heaven's attention today. Today, I'm about to get heaven's attention. And then getting heaven's attention. The Bible says that when Hannah laid with her husband, God remembered her. God remembered her. God heard her. That is what the translation, some, tra some people say, well, that is what the translation of Samuel means. God remembered her and God remembers you. Trust and believe we have a better covenant. We are new Testament Christians. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. We have been redeemed and reconciled through the finished work of, 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 the, cro of the cross. That's done for us. Why are you still talking about your penina? Why are you still crying about your penina? Why are you still fighting with your penina and not talking to the performer? Why are you not? Listen, if you're going to be crying, be crying to the performer. Listen, you praying for a son and God is releasing a Samuel. God is giving you extra. God is giving you extra. Fix your heart. Fix your excitement. Fix your expectation and know that I'm postured for extra. I am postured in this hour. The strengthening and stretching that my faith has been going through is because I'm postured for extra. I'm standing for extra. I'm moving for extra. Ain't nobody went through years of all that stuff with Penina. However, Penina is showing up just to break even. No, we are postured for extra.